Well, tomorrow, this morning, we're going to talk about walking with the king, walking with his majesty. And it's so special this morning. I was just thinking while we're worshiping, um, all of you know Catherine Kuhlman. And I know there were times in her life that she would enter a building where she had to go and minister. She'll get on the stage and she'll sit down. They had a chair for her and she'll sit down and she will not move. They say sometimes it went up to three hours that she kept quiet and just sat on the chair. And then she'll stand up and say, the king is here. Needless to say, chaos. People started crying, travailing, getting healed, delivered, and salvation took place without her even preaching. And she had a fear in her. She didn't, she was so in love with God that she didn't want to do anything unless she knew he was there. And as while I'm standing there worshiping this morning, I realize even more that you and I have got that same ability. That where you walk, where you move, people get healed, delivered, and come to salvation without you even saying anything. Because you walk with the fullness of the power and the authority, the presence of God. In his presence, everything happens. And this is one of the keys that you need to realize to walk with God is to walk in the knowing of his presence. And then you need to know of his presence, not only that he's there, but you need to know that his ability is your ability. So immediately you walk as a miracle. You walk as a power and authority into which nothing is impossible. And we sang this morning and I looked at everything happening in the heavens and the spirit and the angels. And I wonder, do you truly realize with whom you're walking? Do you truly realize when you're sitting here right now, who's with you? And I I think a big test for all of us is to ask ourselves the question, if Jesus had to manifest right now in the natural, what would have changed in your worship? And he is here. He's here. And have you got an expectation right now for him to manifest here in the natural? Walking with the king is such a privilege and an honor. It should actually give you an attitude. Don't make you arrogant, but an attitude. You know, when you just fall in love, um, you walk through the streets and you, you're so proud of your new girlfriend or boyfriend and you walk in the streets and you hope everybody sees her. You just want to introduce her to everything because, oh, nice. <laughs> and that 
that same way that you walked with the one that you love in the natural is the way that you walk with God. You didn't walk the streets when you fell in love and tell him, hey, have you seen my new girlfriend? The one I'm going to get married to. You just walked and hope everybody sees her. Because to you, it's the most beautiful person on earth. But now you walk with a king that's the most magnificent. He's the almighty one. He's the perfection of love. He's a perfection of, of friendship, of kingship. He is, he's the creator. He's the one with wisdom. He is the one. And you and I have the privilege and the honor to be the ones that carries his presence. So where we walk, everything changes. It's impossible for nothing to change if God is with you. So the reality is everything that you are sitting on, every chair, the carpets, the walls, should all be in gold by now. Glory. I'll never forget it. I was saved within the first two months. Been invited to a 24-hour a weekend prayer session. Now, I was all new and all these things, so we started praying. We we're probably about 50 people praying, 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 and then I suddenly saw, oh, there's gold coming on my hands. Oh, there's gold on my face. Oh, I see gold on people. In the natural. The next moment, all four the walls of the room were fully gold, white walls, Gold, but it was like liquid oil. The people stood against the wall and smudged it all over. But you could feel God. There was a holiness. There was a love. There was an honor. But because the people seeked God with their whole being, he manifests. He'll manifest according to your expectation. He'll manifest according to the way that you seek him. And I'm going to give you a few things of what will happen, what do we need to take hold of, and what the reaction will be. One of the first things is Exodus 33, verse 14 and 15 is Moses. And the Lord said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. In some translations, the rest is said, I will give you peace. So what happens? As soon as you, as you have lost your rest or your peace, you know you separated yourself from God. Rest, peace, means that you've taken on, you've clothed yourself with the promise and the word of God. What is his word? I will always protect you. I will cover you. I will always provide for you. You've got nothing to fear. I am your warrior. I'm your protector. I'm your provider. I'm your healer. I'm the one that makes you whole. I'm the one that gave you the ability to overcome everything I'm the one that appointed you to rule and to reign from heavenly places so that you are in the seat of victory all the time. What does it give to you? If I know I can never lose, peace and rest. It actually gives you then the joy of the Lord is my strength. Presence. You can never have perfect joy and authority if you're not aware of his presence. It's a knowing awareness of him. Not, 
it's not being religious, um, die Heere is teenwoordig nie. As you're sitting here right, do you feel him, taste him, smell him? See him. At least one of your senses are supposed to be aware of him. What happens now? You release a sound, a frequency from heaven. You release joy and the devil realizes he's wasting his time with you. You become a magnet. Joy, glory, presence of God creates a platform for God to manifest because everything around you becomes glory. And there are different places of glory. Glory is only in His presence. And glory comes when we praise and we worship. It means when everything of your body, soul and spirit gets to a place of awe and amazement of the King that you gaze upon. The King that you walk with. The one that you are united with and the one that you are partnered with, that you participate with. The kavod of God is with you. What does kavod mean? It's not only glory. It means respect. It means honor. It means majesty. If you go and research the Hebrew, the Greek and the Aramaic, It means it's weight. And it means the significance of God is presence. You've got the nature of the significance of God. You are significant. That's why God calls you in the word, my precious one. Then you've got another glory, the Shekinah glory. We all talk about it and we declare the Shekinah glory is here and everything. But do you know what Shekinah glory means? It means the place where God dwells, His presence. Shekinah glory means it is the fullness of the manifestation of the Holy of Holies. It is an explosive glory, a dunamis glory, where it means it's impossible for any darkness to come close to or to touch. My presence and my peace. None of us should ever leave our houses without a knowing, a surety, of God's presence with you. Because your authority in heavenly realms, your authority in the spirits come out of peace. If you haven't got peace, you've got no authority because you totally in your soul and in your body. And everything about rulership comes out of a heavenly perspective, a spiritual perspective. And Moses said to the Lord, If your presence does not go with me, do not carry us up from here. Massive key to you. Even if we come to church, did you come with the presence of God? The desire that you tell the Lord, Lord, be like David, don't separate yourself from me. Like Moses, don't separate yourself. If you don't come, I'm not going. And how many times do we go to places and do things because you want to be at nice places or with our friends or whatever? We'd rather make choices to be with friends than to say, Lord, wherever you go, I go. Matthew 
Matthew 17. What happens when we step into the presence of God? He says, verse 2, and it says, And his appearance underwent a change in their presence, and his face shone clear and bright like the sun, and his clothing became as white as light. It says, and while he was still speaking, verse 5, behold, a shining cloud um, composed of light overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I am and have always been delighted. Listen to him. Where is God's presence? We know it's in heaven and earth, but you firstly been created as a spiritual being. What does Psalm 48, what does Hebrew 12 teach us? It says, you are seated in Christ on Mount Zion, on the throne with Christ in the new Jerusalem. So what happens if we want to be transfigured and glorified, we need to take up our seat on the mountain. What does Moses say? Lord, if you don't, if you're not up there, don't take us up there. So what does God say? God comes in the New Testament, He tells us, come boldly to the throne. Where is He? On Mount Zion, He's up there. So He's at the place of rulership. He is at the place of habitation, your and my habitation. Not visitation, habitation. You live there, you dwell there, but now it's time to take on that transformation, to become transfigured. So it means it's a total surrender of yourself for Him to consume you. How do I get consumed? I become Rahan. What is Rahan? Friend. Friend. Matthew John 15, he says, I call you my best friend. Jesus says, you my best friend. What does friend and rachan mean? To consume you. God is not just a worldly friend. He's one that says, if I become your friend, you allow me to be your rachan. I will consume you. I will glorify you. I will exalt you. John 17, where Jesus speaks, he said, Lord, glorify me, exalt me so that I can glorify and exalt others. (coughs) Lord, touch me as your friend. Friend is somebody that you hang out with. That you open up your heart, that you trust. And that is probably one of the biggest things in the body of Christ that we have forgotten is to be a friend to Jesus, is to hang out with Jesus. Not being arrogant. He's always always the honor. He's always the perfect one. He's always the almighty one. He's always a respect. But how much time do we spend with our friend? And when you come to God as a friend, He takes us back 
into his covenant. And his covenant in Genesis 17 is all about blessing. It's all about giving. It's all about promises. I will make you more than the sand of the sea. I will make you multiply you more than the stars of heaven. I will bless you. I'll bless you coming in. I'll bless you going out. I will give you the nations. You will rule over creation. You will multiply. I will bless your seed into eternity. What does it mean? He gives. Gives means Natan. And Natan means when he gives, he gives and keep on giving. There's no limit. That's why you've been created for eternity. So God comes and said, walk with me. I give to you the abundance. He said, I will not give to you in small measures. I give you the abundance. So what do we need to do? We need to position ourselves in the abundance. That means we start praising, glorifying God and we start manifesting the abundance because that should be your expectation. What you expect you're gonna receive if you fully trust and believe in Him. What He has promised you, the Word says, if you trust and believe what I declared upon you, you will receive it. Psalm 27. There are so many keys we can keep on on this subject for years. Verse 8, he said, David speaks. Listen to those keys. You have said, seek my face. Inquire for and require my presence as your vital need. My heart says to you, your face, your presence Lord, I will seek, inquire for, and require for the necessity and on the authority of your word. Seek my face. Seek my presence. You know what the strange thing is? You don't have to seek, he's here. The seek in today after the cross is replaced not about seeking, it's desire and acknowledge my presence. And you will see, you'll find. Some of you right now will feel your faces heating up because of what's happening around us now. So God comes to us. What happens to you if you're in His presence? Immediately, you're in your position as a king and a priest in the order of Melchizedek. You are clothed with power, with authority, with the fullness. You have been clothed with the mirror image of Yahweh in the Holy of Holies. Do you realize your spirit man right now is the perfection of glory.
And when your spirit man reveals that position, that glory, that face of God to your soul, your soul takes on that perfection. And then the rest is that our body should take on that same manifestation in the natural, just like Enoch, just like Moses when he came from the mountain, when he came from the presence of God, he walked in the glory because it's an eternal transformation that takes place in you in the presence of God. And Moses was so madly in love with Jesus that he never separated himself from the glory that the people ran away, that he had to cover his face with glory so that the people do not die. And that's why I shared it with a life with the young people the other day. That's why Hebrew 5 verse 14 are so, so important. It's one of the greatest keys that you can ever have. The Lord says you'll only eat solid food. You'll only come to maturity if you exercise your spiritual senses. How to smell Him, to taste Him, to see Him, to feel Him, to hear Him. Because that makes you aware of where He is. That makes you aware of His presence. And that gives you attitude. Read you Revelation 1. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. He who is, He who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And when we walk in the presence of God, we are with the King and in Him and participate with Him. It means that you take on that same dimensions that you've got to, you have the ability right now where you are now to see your past, to see the past to the day when you were created. You see the present, but you've got the ability to see into the future. But the Lord says, don't worry about tomorrow. I will provide. He's talking about provision. But why do you want to see yourself in the future? Because you want to see how can I rule and reign to glorify God? What does the future behold me? What needs to be changed? Because you've got the ability to change your future. Did God not change His mind when Moses went and sacrificed for Israel? He said, I'm gonna destroy them. I'm gonna remove them from the earth. And Moses went and he stepped into his priesthood and he sacrificed and he repented and said, Lord, no, please glorify them, give them life. And he changed it. God shows you your future so that you can change it to glorify Him. It's not about yourself, it's about Him. Why do you want to see your past? Because you want to see where you made mistakes and you want to see what are the promises that God made me, why He created me, so that I can live it and manifest it now, so that I can glorify Him. And then I become the present. I rule and reign according to the purpose and the will of my Father in heaven. I was in the spirit, natural position. That's your natural habitation. It's not getting together in these little groups. Oh, come on, gaan nou ascend. Ascend Spartu. <laughs> You've got this religious acts of we're gonna sit now and ascend. I thought the Lord said we are in heaven. You with Him, where are you ascending to? Right. 
But we try and be so supernatural to try and impress people by our language. You must have the supernatural language. Bly jy onder die grond, laat jy op wil gaan. Jesus, kom help. I was in the spirit and the Lord said, I heard behind the great voice. Jesus. Like a calling of a war trumpet. You and I are the trumpets of God. We're the voice. We're the sound. You're the frequency. You're the vibration of heaven. Of his breath. When God created, commanded creation to take place. His spirit, his breath hovered on it. And it formed. When you speak, when you vibrate and release the sound, your spirit hovers and it forms glory. Saying, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Write promptly what you see, your vision in a book, and send it to the seven churches we are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, Pergamum, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see who was the voice speaking to me, and turning, I saw seven lambs. lambs. What does John say? He said, I turned to see. God gave all of us the ability to see. What did um, John say? He did not say, I went and I seeked and I begged the Lord to see his face. He said, I turned and I saw. I turned and I saw. But now we've got an omnipresent all seeing God that's all around us. I don't even have to turn because wherever I turn, God is there. Can't even run away from Him. Although some people try. Journeys in their life, you're going to run into Him all the time. Those parents who battle with some of their children said, my children are not saved at the moment. They're not, don't worry, they can't run away. They're going to run into Him. They're going to run into him and they ain't going to get a big surprise. They're going to get slayed by love. Slayed by love. Your duty is just as parents to reveal Jesus and to love. Love and truth. And in the midst of the land, so one like a son of man. I want you now to visualize this because this is a description of you in the spirit. Are you a son of God? I looked and I saw one like a son of man. Clothes of the robe which reached to his feet and with a girdle of gold about his breast. Clothed in glory, 
clothed in love, clothed in truth. Around his breast, because it covers his heart. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes flashed like a flame of fire. Do you realize right now where you are in the spirit and if you look at people in the spirit right now, there's fire coming out of your eyes. You are the radiance of the perfection, your hair and everything of God in the spirit. His feet glowed like burnished bright bronze as it is refined in the furnace and his voice was like the sound of many waters. When God speaks, his voice goes into all of creation like the sound of many waters. It's like multiple billions and millions of armies, powers that he releases. You've got the same. Your feet, the bronze in the furnace, look like it's on fire. Why? Because you are a burning one for God. Where you walk, you set everything alight for God. You walk with a purpose. So your desire is that somebody else steps into my footsteps so that they can become a burning one. Jy begin a felfeer. And believe me, it happens. I'll never forget years ago, I ministered in Robertson. And I laid hands on people and I stood before it. I prayed, I said, Lord, I wanna be a manifestation of Revelation 1. I want it when I look at people that they must get burned by the fire coming out of my eyes that they need to be purified. And I'll never forget it, there was a lady there. And as I touched her and I could feel fire coming out of me, she got slain in the spirit and I carried on ministry. At the end, she came to me and she had a blister on her forehead. Red all over blister and she said, I don't know what happened when you spoke to me, fire came out of me and burned me. But I asked the Lord, I wanted his fire. She will never forget that. What you ask, what you meditate on, what the Lord tells him about you, about him, that is you. You need to trust, start to trust and believe it. His right hand held seven stars and from his mouth there came forth a sharp two-edged sword and his face was like the sun shining in full power in midday. Now, the law tells you, you created in my image. How big's that? If the Lord says, I stand with seven stars in my hand, how big are you? If the Lord says, the earth is my footstool, how big are you? But we look in the natural. And I'm still seeing people looking for each other's spirits he saw. Looking, who got your spirit man? You're looking at the long place, it's as big as God. It's in his image. Is that arrogant? No, that's what my king says. But I need to grow into it. I need to get mature. I need to take on that dimension. I need to have the mind of Christ. I need to be like Him because that is what He declared upon me. I can't expect just Him to bless me and to bless me and still have a spirit man this big. 
because I'll never have the ability to reveal and to release the fullness of God. He said, when I speak, a two-edged sword comes out of my mouth. It means it's a sword of spirit and truth. It's a sword where what you speak, the truth comes out of your mouth that are aligned with the heart. Where the heart and the mouth comes together, it's a two-edged sword in the fullness of the power and the revelation of Jesus Christ. And his face was shining in full power at my day. Can you go outside now and look at the sun? No. But we can look at each other, but the Lord declared, that's who you are, the full power of the sun in midday at its biggest, warmest position. When Israel, when Moses went up the mountain and Israel saw the fullness of the sun on the mountain, they fell on their faces and declared, Jesus is king. Our God is alive. Most of them ran away. Fear of the Lord overcome, and that's needed in this world today that the fear of the Lord needs to come back in the church, needs to come back in governments, in nations, in creation. So what do you and I need to do? Here's the key. Reveal the glory of the Son. Psalm 86, 11 and 12. David speaks and said, Lord, teach me and show me. I'm paraphrasing. Teach me and show me your ways that I can glorify you. Verse 12. From now on, everything I will do, I will do it to glorify you. What he actually declares is, Lord, from now on, I will walk in your presence all the time so that you are glorified. Glory to walk in his presence all the time as Lord, I will walk in obedience all the time and you will be glorified. So I need to step into that. Exodus 33, 14, peace and rest. Nafsh, to mean to lie down, to repose, to relax, surrendered in God. We all serve the same God. We all have got the same covenant, the same promise. We all have got the ability to walk into the perfection. What are our excuses? It's not waiting on God. Stop that religious mark, remarks. I'm waiting on the Lord. He's here. He's here. He's waiting on us to trust and to believe Him. 
He's waiting on us to be his friend so that he can give and never stop giving. He's waiting on us to seek him and to create that platform for him to manifest. The awe and amazement of God needs to come back. And that only comes out of presence. That can only happen when you are madly in love with the great I am. Where you have restored him in your gate of first love. On the throne of first love. And where he's everything. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to stand. I want you to be expectant. And just open up yourself expectantly, knowingly to be touched by Him. And visualize it. Show Him your visualization must come out of your heart where you show them your desire to be like Him and how it looks to you. What do you want to look like? How do you visualize Jesus? How do you visualize the magnificent one, Yahweh? And how does His image look to you? Because that is what you want to be like. And if you can't visualize, if you don't see it, you can't become it. Because what you behold with your eyes, you become. Father, thank you that the fullness of the God at three and one is here. Yahweh, our Father. Yahshua, Mashiach, the Son. The Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, the breath of God. But most of all, we open up our gates of first love and come and be seated on it. As our king of first love, as the anointed one, as our only God, our only father, our only king, our high priest. Come and sit on now on your throne, Father, in the fullness of your glory, Father, that you are that sun in the midday, that we can see it, that we can become it. Father, we declare today we are created in the image of Lord God, Yahweh. 
We've got hair as white as snow. We've got eyes where it's like fire coming out of our eyes and lightning. We've got feet like bronze and fire, Lord, because we are the burning ones in front of Your throne, Father, and we walk the earth to represent You in spirit and truth. we the ones that speaks and the sword comes out of the minds to, to divide the light and the darkness so that Your truth can manifest, Father. We declare that we've got the heart of the Father and the mind of Christ. We declare that the fullness of your power and authority is over us. And what you've done for us on the cross, it's done. We declare, Father, that we are overcomers, that you say, We are seated in Christ, in heaven, on the throne, on Mount Zion in the new Jerusalem. Father, that we rule and reign out of victory. We're not moving towards victory. We are the overcomers. We are the victorious ones. We are the ones that give life, Father. We declare our habitation is in heaven that we dwell there. Lord, I declare that each and every one in this place, every family represented here, will become friends of God, Rachan, that will be consumed by You, that will step into Your blessing, that we will become a blessing to each and every one, that we will become a blessing to all of creation. We declare, Lord, from now on, we're gonna walk with a purpose, with authority, with power, and that all the earth and all of creation will come and manifest and shout out, Jesus is King. Teach us and show us your way. Thank you that we can see it. Thank you that you said you've given us eyes to see and ears to hear with spiritual discernment. Thank you, Lord, that when we sit with you in heaven, we can see, we can hear, and Lord, we can manifest it here on earth. Lord, let that burning desire for you get into our bones, get into each and every cell of us. Like David said, you said, Lord, seek my face. From now on, I will seek your face and I will glorify. We say, thank you, Lord, that we can see your face each and every second. And where we walk, we see you gazing upon us and that we can walk to see your face, to take on your countenance. We declare, Father, we're not going to wait anymore. We're not going to be religious anymore and just say the whole time, we wait on the Lord. But we're going to become doers of the Word. We're going to start manifesting and doing every prophecy, everything that He declared upon us, everything that Yahweh declared and decreed upon us, every promise. And we know and we declare today that we trust and believe You. And we're not going to have any idle words anymore. We're going to do it. We're going to manifest it. And we're going to be it. And we say thank you.
just receive. that presence and that feeling that you've got now you've got an ability to never move out of it imagine you step into this new week and you feel this peace you feel the victory this is walking with God this is walking with God Keeping your eyes upon Him, upon His face all the time. And to be separated from God is when you take your eyes off Him. That's how you separate yourself from God. So never 